Aloha, this is Rob Hack, back with another episode of Exporting from Hawaii. Today, I'm very lucky to have a guest come in all the way from Hilo on the Big Island, is Robin Williams. She's the president of Hawaiian Body Products. Thank you very much for being here, Robin. Thanks for coming all the way from Hilo. <laughs> it was fun. It's a pleasure. And thank you for my wonderful lay. So. Uh, I've known Hawaiian body products for a few years. I think most people in Hawaii will have seen it at stores, mm -hmm. uh, some upscale stores. Can you tell us about the history of you? How did you get to Hawaii? And then how did you start <laughs> this company? Well, uh, let's see. We, I came with my husband to Hawaii in 2001 and our little two-year-old. And it was a bit of a, really a leap off a cliff. Um, transition. We came from California where my husband had a woodworking business and I had a clothing business. I had been uh, designing and manufacturing clothing um, in Asia for many years and uh, we decided to move to Hawaii and it was one of those strange things like, uh, wow, now what are you doing? Um, but we, we came basically to get close to our Hanai family who are, are Hawaiian and we decided after a number of years of flip-flopping work and my company, uh, clothing company dissolving that we were gonna start a new company. And in 2004, we moved to the Big Island with the idea that uh, as a family, and I mean the greater family, we were gonna start a Hawaiian body product line. And uh, my Hanai sister, Kila, had been formulating natural body products for many years. And she was going to be the formulator. I was going to be the marketer and salesperson. And my husband trans uh, basically went from being a woodworker to a production manager, which he ended up being very good at. Uh, so that's how we started Ola. And you wonder, well, why, why you know, body products or something like that? And we felt that there was definitely a need in the market back in those days. There wasn't a lot of really high quality um, luxury. Um, body and you know skincare lines and so we felt like we had a, a real niche and my sister Keila has a real knack I say divine a sort of divine from her great-grandmother um, uh, from Hawaii and she just really knew understood plants and understood how she could create a sort of a synergy of Hawaiian plants in a beautiful product and yeah it just kind of flew out the door starting 2006 well, that's great. So you mentioned, it was a good segue to my next question, okay. because uh, Hawaiian Body Products is a parent company, but you mentioned Ola. So can you yes. explain the difference between the brands that you have? Yes, Ola Tropical Apothecary is our body care line. It's at the center of the table. It is basically a tropically scented group of products, travel size and full size products that are uh, focus on the spa industry, um, which is more of a high-end, sophisticated consumer level. Although we do sell at Whole Foods and numerous um, better specialty stores, we have really focused on the spa industry all these years. We brought in our skincare line over here near me. Um, there's a few products shown there. We brought in our all-natural Hawaiian plant-based skincare line last year. And uh, over there by Rob, we have our Olapono line, which was a line that was co-curated with uh, Kumu Dane Silva on the Big Island, uh, a kind of a cultural practitioner who helped us to create a line focused on self-care, massage, purification, and relieving uh, inflammation. So we really have three very different groups that work well together. They all have a plant-based concept. Um, you know, beautiful Hawaiian ingredient focused, um, but they are three different groups. And uh, near me uh, is the Lomi stick. Can you just very briefly explain the history of your Lomi stick and the, the group that makes these Lomi sticks? I think that's yeah. a great story. The Lomi sticks are a wonderful addition to a self care, you know, massage, you know, um, wellness group because it it's a very easy tool to use on yourself or on your ohana, on your family. 
It's uh, actually it was Kumu Dane's idea to create a, a simple portable Lomi stick. The traditional Lomi sticks are much bigger. They're L shaped, not exactly portable or user friendly, easy to use. So the Lomi sticks it were kind of a, uh, a new idea. We <laughs> started making them originally just friend or this person, that person making the Lomi sticks. But then one day I, I discovered the Lanakila Learning Center um, through one of the teachers there. And next thing you know, I was talking to the director. Uh, the school was always underfunded. This Lanakila Learning Center is an at risk youth uh, alternative high school in Hilo and obviously very under, um, under subsidized. So we were very thrilled to be part of that. We buy the Lomi sticks from them. They, the kids go out into the woods, they harvest, they sand, they learn about how to use tools, about how to use their hands, have common sense, you know, really good, you know, life lessons, I think. And it's guava. And it's guava, it's vivi. So it's actually like an invasive species that we are turning into a good purpose. Um, they are all different, obviously, one of a kind. And on the back of the Lomi stick, it talks about uh, our partnership with the Lanakila Learning Center. Um, and also the Lanakila Learning Center does farming up on our property, which grows many of the ingredients that we use in our products, including guava, uh, taro, mamaki, um, lemongrass, uh, aloe vera, flower, gardenia, hibiscus, uh, avapui, ginger, olena, uh, turmeric, many things. So. Well, you're really uh, talking up the property. Um, you're going to get visitors then. <laughs> now, are you yeah. set up to take visitors? We or? unfortunately were not, and I know agritourism is such a big thing, and I wish that we were set up to, do, to have tourists come, have visitors come, because it's a perfect environment. It's just that we're not set up. We have a small factory on the property. We don't really have a presentation area. Um, we don't. Ha we just aren't quite there yet. Um, would love to do that someday. But basically, it's very cool because we grow the ingredients, we process them on property, we in infuse them into the products. We do everything you know by hand. It's very labor intense, but I call that you know gives the product even more sure, quality and value. Is there? Um even a little store on the property? Could people stop by and buy it? Or they no, have to there's buy no it store. At a, at a store in town? Yeah, we don't have a store yet. We always kind of uh, direct people to our, our local health food store or, or spas, um, you know, hotels. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, even after 15 years, we don't have our own store. Um, we talk about it a lot, but <laughs> haven't well, done it. Well, that's a whole other can of worms. It is, too. it is. So this is, you. I know um, this Ola... Plumeria body butter is one of your most popular products. Yes. Right? What's the, how long have you been making this? What's the history of this? Well, it smells wonderful. Well, believe it or not, actually, all the products that you see here um, are, most of them, I should say, 98% of the products um, we've had since the beginning. We, we launched our moisturizing products, our cleansing products, our hydrating products, uh, all together with many different scents. Um, it was all about bringing the sense of Hawaii, the ingredients of Hawaii, and these really beautiful, high-quality, crafted products. The body butter is just one of our hero products because it has such a luxurious feel, and uh, makes your, it's very you know makes your skin radiant. It hydrates all day long. It's not it's not a cheap product. No waxes and you know filler type ingredients, but. Um, yeah, our, our, our products are definitely based in the energy of the ola, if you will. And ola, by the way, means life force in Hawaiian. So that is the premise, bringing the life force of Hawaii into products wherever you are. You mentioned scents. And um, for me, anything that's lily koi flavored, I will taste. I love <laughs> lily koi. Don't and, eat but, that. <laughs> no, but this, the scent of this um, passion fruit body butter is really incredible. Like it. It definitely, it smells edible, yes, but it's it really does. wonderful. I highly recommend um, people run out and get some of that. So are there, did the scents make it into the other creams? Yeah, we basically every, we have coconut uh, with a hint of lemongrass. We have passion fruit, plumeria, pikake, which is Hawaiian jasmine, of course. Rainforest, which is actually highlights maile and iliahi, sandalwood. Um, those five scents, I think I mentioned five, 
and they run through the whole line. So from our deep sea body mist focused on Molokai, uh, Nigari, or, or deep sea minerals, to our sugar polish featuring Hawaiian honey and, sh and raw sugar, our lotions, our butters, our body washes, all biodegradable, all good for the environment. It's a very well thought out line. That's great. And I, I love to hear about how much of it is made in Hawaii and the Big Island in particular. Mm -hmm. um, is there a common denominator in your customer? Like, is your customer mm. of a certain age yeah. or demographic? Or I'm very curious about. I know, and I, it, it's it's true. It's a very interesting question. I would say our customer mostly is uh, 30 to 50, based on you know income level. I mean, it's not a cheap product. It's a sophisticated product. I know young people are also very interested in ingredients and using you know, natural and organic products on their skin and, and in their food. But it's, it's definitely more geared towards a, a more sophisticated audience. Mm. Um, and I, I think the price point puts it a little bit out of the league of, you know, a 20-something person. But I th they still love it. People, you know, even young people, especially in Japan, when they run into us, they're just, they're all over the sense and can't believe it, you know, screaming and <laughs> enjoying is, is it. Is there a product you found that is particularly successful in Japan? More so than here for it, the one that's taking um, off. To be there. honest, not really. They the same products are as are successful in Japan as in Hawaii, but, but because it's Japan and the price point is therefore even higher, uh, we sell a lot of our travel size products. So mm. it's all very small, uh, more of a small centric sale. Um, but the sense, you know, we, we noticed when we first went into Japan about eight years ago that coconut was just a no-go. You know, the Japanese really didn't like coconut. Um, loved passion fruit from the get-go. Mm. Really all about plumeria because they'd always known plumeria. You know, it's just a word that they recognize. But um, we found coconut has really uh, taken off. And they love the rainforest, I think, because it's kind of grassy and subtle. Japanese, I, I think, really tend to like a subtler sense, um, and and definitely more floral than fruity. But passion fruit is a standout for some reason. And I, you've made some headway in European markets recently. Is there any difference there, Switzerland? Or well, Miami? yes, and yeah, actually, um, the <laughs> Europeans seem to have a different nose altogether. And it's, I find that fascinating. Um, they definitely like the subtler, I like more kind of Japanese in that way, subtler sense, um, not the bold sense. Very, very interested in um, ingredients. I mean, the, the Europeans are already sort of leagues ahead of us in terms of um, curating and uh, uh, sort of, you know, uh, limiting thing, ingredients and and. But, they, but I think the same products sell well. Our Olapono line does really well in Switzerland, but the, uh, our importer is also a Lomi Lomi practitioner, so I think oh, she's biased. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, so she's focusing more on the wellness part of, of the market is in that way. And um, I know, too, you're selling some in Canada. Any difference? Is Canada much more like the mainland U.S. market? I would say I would say so. I would say that, that Canada and the U.S. have a lot more similarities. We haven't. Um, we, we don't have as much experience. Um, we don't have an importer in Canada or a distributor yet. Um, but we do. Uh, we've been selling to individual spas mostly in Canada um, since we started. So let's say you know 14, 12, 14 years ago. And I think in many respects, it's like bringing sort of paradise into wherever you are, into Ontario, Canada, or Alberta, or, you know, BC. It's, it's really a special niche. It's an escape. It's, it really trans, transforms you and your attitude when you smell and try these products. I think in that way, it really, it's all about just Hawaii on, on that level, just bringing that sense of taking a trip, you know, wherever you are no matter when, when it is, you know, winter or summer. So most of your 
Is this a fair statement? Most of your distribution starts with spas, is that? Yeah. Uh, and then and then people, customers of the spa, realize how nice these products are, and they'll buy them on their own afterwards. Absolutely, it... we get we have devoted. I mean, once people try our products, I think they really. Do, it's safe to say they fall in love, and they we get calls and in emails from people constantly. I tried it here at this spa or that spa or that resort, or it was in my you know in the amenities, and they just go, I need more of that. I love that particular one mm -hmm. scent or the other scent, and have to have it. You know, it's like once they try it, it's kind of like they have to have it. <laughs> they get kind of obsessed. Great. All right, with that, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Robin Williams of Hawaiian Body Products. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of Think Tech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Aloha, this is Rob Hack back on Exporting from Hawaii. Today with Robin Williams, president of Hawaiian Body Products on the Big Island in Hilo. Are you right in Hilo or are you just outside? Just right outside, right up, up, the, up Malka a bit. That's great. Um, let's talk now about actually sending the products to Japan, for example. Mm -hmm. A lot of our audience wants to hear about Japan, but I also know you have experience in Japan working there for mm -hmm. um, several years selling these products. So we've already established that you sell Pretty much every product you would buy in Hawaii, you would sell those. In Japan. Pretty, with the exception of the skincare that hasn't uh, quite that hasn't launched yet, except uh, at Halikolani Resort in Okinawa, they just opened and introduced our skincare, so that was exciting. But most of the products, yes, have been introduced into the Japanese market. Recently, you were in Okinawa for that yeah. show or yeah. that um, uh, opening, that opening of, of the yeah. where they're they're selling your products and using the products. In Oh. Yes, in the services. So, um, what did you find about Okinawa? What was, it's an interesting place because it's Japan, but it's not really Japan. Yeah, it has a really different feel. I really didn't know what to expect. It's um, The people are a, a little bit different, even in the look of the people. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to make stereotype comments, but it just, I was only there for a few days. So, but I really had a, a sense that Okinawa had an incredibly rich history, which was basically obliterated um, for the most part in terms of visuals. But there, it's a very uh, tropical place. It was very hot. Similar to Hawaii. Very way. similar to Hawaii. And the resorts up there um, have the, uh, the advantage of incredibly blue, gorgeous ocean coastline, mm -hmm. you know, with tro the tropical elements. It's, it's quite an amazing, beautiful place. And the Halikulani... Uh, brought us in, and we're very proud and honored to be there. And uh, because there is so many similarities between Hawaii and Okinawa, and because we also work with the Halikulani in Waikiki, I think they thought you know, it was kind of a, a good fit to bring Ola to Okinawa. Well, that's great. Um, yeah. I don't know. I assume, though, I've been there, but I just don't recall. Most of their guests are from mainland Japan. They, Actually, China, no. Though, they they call themselves Okinawa calls itself the gateway to Asia. Mm -hmm. I think e either way, it's kind of it's like somehow uh, a bridge uh, from uh, from one Asian country to another Asian country. So I I feel like it's definitely a bridge to Japan from China or or Southeast Asia. But um, and I I think it's a it's a very popular resort place to visit because of its climate. 
That's great. That's a good culture. place to have your products. That hopefully yeah, expose I think them so. to other countries, right, uh, consumers. Right. And then you were recently at the Hankyu Festival, yes. which is um, Hankyu is a large Japanese department store, but more focused towards southern Japan. It's headquartered in Osaka, Osaka. and they have an annual fair every year. Um, this one was longer than normal, about. And days and two weeks. Yes, yeah. That's a long fair. And so it is. you bring your products from Hawaii and you sell them at the fair. Yeah, we, we do. And But keep in mind that because we are considered a cosmetics brand, um, we go through a lot more of a rigorous uh, uh, sort of a clearance uh, process to get our products into Japan. Japan's very strict with their pharmaceutical, sure. you know, cosmetics um, department. So first of all, we rely heavily on an importer. They have to go through all the rigmarole of bringing the products in. It's very expensive to get that license, and not many people have it. So it's a, it kind of a, it's a real channel, but you have to do, go through those channels if you are a cosmetics line. So it's easy, but on the other hand, it's easier for us because we can arrive at Hankyu Products have all been cleared through customs. They had to. They all been labeled with Japanese label because they have to sure. be uh, the ingredients. And then uh, we just go ahead and, and have a great time for a week and a half because the Japanese love the products. How, <laughs> many, how, how much product do you take per show? And do you, then would you ship all of that by air or by ocean? We ship by air because because it's actually not. We've we found we get great rates with FedEx. Um, we actually use their great rates program, which uh, on any given day, they give you the best possible rate, and it's quite reasonable. So we've, uh, for the most part now, we exclusively use FedEx for shipping. We do buy, we get their, you know, we use air, and it, because with natural products, you don't want to mess around with hot storage areas right. and lengthy times in, trans, in transition. It's just risky. You want the product to be in perfect shape when it gets to its destination. Sure. So. Yeah, FedEx is like a three-day turnaround, door to door. No, there's no flights from Hilo to Osaka, so all of those things, products come through Honolulu. Yeah, and yeah, they and come then through go Honolulu. To Japan or maybe even the Philippines. Okay, that's great. Um, so you were there for ten days, and how much did you take roughly? Oh, well, that's we, a lot of product. We have, they have certain expectations of, about your sales. So there this is Honkyu. Honkyu is very clear on what they expect you to do in terms of sales. You work extremely hard for 10 days or more, uh, long days. I mean, they, I keep saying, we're American. We're not used to working like that. <laughs> and they're like, they look at me like, we don't even understand what you're saying. So, you know, 12 hour days is pretty typical, but you're on your feet and you're selling like crazy all day long. So, that's um, fun though. Huh? That's fun. It Hearing is fun. Hearing the cha ching in the background, the, the cash register. Or it's just wonderful seeing the appreciation level. Um, we have so many return customers that come every year and they just load up on our products. And it just, I always say, you know, you guys make me feel so special and our line so special. That's so there's repeat customers that yeah. are coming back and looking for you and looking yeah. to stock up on this product for a year. So that's great. Yeah. Now, where would a customer in Japan, if you weren't at that show, where would a customer go to buy product? Well, that's a good question. And because we've, we've had a, a very kind of a, a roller coaster ride through importers over the last you know, eight to 10 years, um, we, we had accounts, we lost accounts, we got new accounts, we lost it up and down. Um, the, the, the importers of recent years have been very fond of just having a website and selling the products through the website and loving the marketing value of Honkyu or other you know, outside sort of marketing venues, but then really channeling all the sales through the website, obviously they're making a much higher so, market. But there's an inventory in Japan where somebody could order from a website and get shipped from that end in that's inventory correct. domestically. It doesn't get shipped from Hilo to no, customer it, in Japan. No, that's correct. Um, well, that's but, good. That's it. Yeah, and because it's such a short turnaround from Hawaii to Japan in terms of our ship, they can place orders, get them you know, within a week, and, and, and fill their customer orders in a short time frame. 
What do you think is the difference, roughly speaking, what is the markup in the Japanese market above and beyond mm -hmm. the price here to account for shipping and the testing and the labeling in mm -hmm. Japanese and whatever? Is there a significant markup or is it just yeah, a few I, percent? Or? No, I'd say it's pretty significant. It's between about 30 to 50 percent above what we would typically suggest our retail price at. So I think other. I think they really kind of base it on what they think the market can bear. Um, so some products have a higher profit margin than others, which is normal, but it's pretty high. So the customers are, are in Japan are prepared to pay that high price. But this is a premium product, and yeah. I think they know that going in. But what I like to hear is that you have local inventory, and a customer there can order and probably get it in her hands or his hands in 48, 72 hours, whatever. pretty much as quickly as the, yeah, as the local agent can turn it around. That's right. Domestic shipping in Japan is extremely efficient, as you, of can, course. Imagine, as you can imagine it would be. But <laughs> Everything is. You can get things uh, around Japan quite quickly, so that, that's really good to hear. And I wish that more of our local companies here in Hawaii would Do you have any idea for each of the SKUs? You have a lot of SKUs, actually. Yeah, um, too many. <laughs> how, how much that has cost over the years to get tested for these individual markets? Do you have any idea? <laughs> you know, I, I don't. They, I, I don't know how much it's costed to test the individual products because they are complex formulations. I mean, I think we go out of our way to make our formulas complicated, which probably uh, is to the detriment of our importers. But well, Let me ask you a quick question. When you get it tested, you have to tell the Japanese authorities or the company mm -hmm. that's testing your product, you have to tell them your exact recipe. A you know, lot of people would be hesitant about yes. that. Yes. So well, how do you feel? It's not an exact recipe. It, mm -hmm. we, there are rules that it give you the, the manufacturer permission to, 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 you have to provide a manufacturer's certificate, and it has to list each ingredient. But you can do close to this you know, percentage, so below 3%, below 1%, above 5%, below 10%, something like that. So it, it, if you think people are going to haul off and try to repeat your recipes, they're going to have a, an idea how to do that, but uh, not exactly. Okay. But Japan, I, I wouldn't be worried about not kind of Japan. intellectual Japan. Right. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. Before we do, can you put up the one slide, please, is um, contact information for Robin, Hawaiian body product in Hilo. This is your main telephone number. Yes, it is. That is and our office. And info at hawaiianbodyproducts.com. If people wanted, were watching this show and they wanted to run out and buy some of this, where would they go right now to... DFS well, DFS is a great source both at the airport and at the Tea Galleria. They carry our skincare and the Olopono group. And uh, Whole Foods at Queens, Kahala, and Kailua carries a lot of our two ounce uh, travel size products. Um, and actually, and many of the hotels uh, that have spas in Waikiki and Honolulu um, carry our brand as well. Great. And I highly recommend everybody in the audience run out and <laughs> smell the. Passion fruit um, body it's, butter. I it's love the it. top selling scent. It's really it. incredible. So thank you very much for being here, <laughs> for coming pleasure. all the way from the Big Island. We really appreciate it. Um, this was Rob Hack wrapping up another episode of Exporting from Hawaii. Mahalo. <laughs>